Okay. So let's have a quick recap what we have discussed in the last session. The last session we have discussed about how we can create our Azure account. And then we have discussed about how we can create our Windows virtual machine. And in today's session, I'm going to show you how we can create a Linux virtual machine. Most of the process is same, create virtual machine for Windows and Linux one, but little bit of changes we need to do as per our Linux based operating system. But before starting of that particular topic, anyone have any question? You can please raise your Yes, GoPM, you have raised your hand. No, no, no nothing. Thank you. Yes, Naveen. Uh, basically, the sizing and everything we can come to this this course or a separate course. No? If you have something sizing or how much of sizing, how much of CPUs, or if you have anything else, if a client giving the overall picture like that, under service requires a sizing and how much of CPUs. So we, that, that we can select based on the size, the size we are getting it from Azure side. Oh, that agreed. But uh, if you are there asking for that, these servers, how we can approaching, how we can give the client side, how we can approach, how we can give them to the, this we can go for the, is anything, you have any chart on that? At least we can consider on no, that. You can, you can see the all, you can click on all sizes, you can see all sizes there. There is no specific document created by the Azure, or there is no specific chart, we have it. If you click on all sizes, you can see all the sizes providing by you just okay. need to select a size as per your client requirement and that requirement giving you by your client. Okay. If, okay. Generally, if you have any defined, the predefined basic, or if anything else on the CPU, so much of and RAM and anything pre basic, is there anything else on that? Not right. No. The de de depend on the client requirement based on the application which they are going to use in. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Kiran. Actually, when I try to create the Windows VM, uh, I'm mm -hmm. getting that uh, uh, when you showed showed us that uh, uh, after after selection of the image and everything, then click next, 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 right? So mm -hmm. I also did the same, but as the network is not selected automatically, so I need to go. Network system is creating it. Yeah, that, that's At the time, you, are, you don't need to select because right now we didn't discuss anything about networking. Regarding networking, we'll discuss in upcoming session. So you just go to next next, next. system will automatically create virtual network. Yeah, but but it was not created. Uh, so I manually. I, I, I think I didn't get any any email from your side. Uh, if yeah. face, if uh, you yes, might sir. be remember yesterday yes, I told that if face anyone face issue they can you can email me but i don't yeah, think yeah. so i got any email yeah i didn't send after that i tried manually i given that name and i after click next then default was check it, it took and it was uh okay for me but uh, i don't know why it was not happening so next time it's, it is automatically get created you don't need to create manually like if you uh -huh. might be remember in previous session i just click next 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 yes, yes, yes. on this spot system will create those things yeah 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 okay i will check that one next why it was not happening Thank you. Yes, Oscar. Yeah, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm I'm good new morning. at today's my first day. Uh, uh, I don't even know what to say, but uh, I'm happy being here. And then uh, I was not uh, yesterday in the class, so I don't even know how I can get the, the recording and so on. Oscar day one and day two recording is there in our YouTube channel. Okay. Oh, I'm sharing oh. our YouTube link in the chat box. Okay. You can you will see day one, day two recording there in our YouTube channel. And even my team has already shared the day one, day two recording in WhatsApp group. If you want, they'll share again after today's session. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, then uh if I want to get a, a discussion with you, I don't know how can I discuss with you directly. You want if you want have any question, you can email me. Okay, to your email. Okay. okay. 
Yes. I've shared okay. my email ID. You can email me, but make sure whenever you're going to email me, you are going to mention your batch number and this batch number is 127. One? 127, 127. 127, thank you. Anyone have any question? You can please let me know. So we'll start with our today's topic where we are going to discuss about how we can create a Linux virtual machine. To create Linux machine or to create Windows virtual machine, the prerequisite is resource group. We have seen in previous session when we are trying to create virtual machine, what is the first thing we need to select after subscription? After subscription, we need to select a resource group. In previous session, the resource group which we have created it was deleted. Now I am going to again create a resource group. So let me create again resource group. I'm giving the same name to my resource group, group hyphen 127. Region, I'm selecting as India, Central India. Click on review plus create and click on our resource group is click on virtual machine. So I'm going to create virtual machine. Selecting a resource group, giving the name to my Linux virtual machine. Region by default system is selecting as Central India. Now here we need to select. In previous session, we have selected an image called Windows Server 2019. In today's session, we are creating a Linux. So we have image called Ubuntu Server 20.04. So I'm selecting this one. Scroll down. Size, we have discussed in previous session. To create any machine, we require minimum four things. Image, CPU, RAM, and address. Image, we have already selected Linux. CPU and RAM, we are giving one CPU, one GB of RAM, with the type called B1S. Why we are selecting B1S, B1S type? Because B1S type is coming under your no. So we have by default select size B1S. So I'm also going with the same size B1. I'll practice if you want to select any other size, you can select also any other size. But yes, if you are using it other size. After 30 days, definitely you'll get a bill for it. Now, in previous session, when we have created Windows machine, it is only asking for username and password. But for Linux machine, we have two options. One is SSH public key, other one is password. So first I'm going to show you with SSH key option. Then I'm going to show you the password option. So here we are selecting the option SSH public key. And by default system is picking a username, Azure user. And here I need to give my key name. And key name can be any name, whatever the name you want to give, you can give to this particular key and this key is help us to connect our Linux machine. So let me just give here key one one two seven hyphen key hyphen Linux. 
This is the name I'm giving to my. In previous session, we have discussed it to connect Windows machine. Which port we need to enable? RDB. And RDB port number is double three eight nine. Same way for Linux also. We need to enable SSH port. And anyone in the chat box, let me know what will be the number of SSH port. Correct. Correct answer is. And for RDP, the port number is double three eight nine. Same way for SSH, the port number is. 20. And you can see here by default system is enabling a port number SSH 20. Let's just again a quick recap. We have selected our resource group. We have given the name to our virtual machine. We have selected the region. We have selected the image. Then we have selected a size B1S. And then we have used SSH public key option. We have given our username and here is our. And in the last system is by default enabling our SSH port. Now I don't need to work on any of the tabs. So I'm just going to click on next. Next, or directly I can click on review or plus create also. It's not mandatory to go to next, next, next. You can directly click on review plus validation past. Now click on create. Please see my screen very carefully. When I'm going to click on create, I'll get one pop up here. See here. I'm getting one pop-up. Why I'm getting this pop-up? The pop-up I'm getting it because the key which I'm generating, I need that particular key to download. Download private key and create resource. I stored that key and the key extension is dot so we have created our linux virtual machine now is just creating a linux machine our work is completed no we need to connect to this particular machine also like in previous session to connect our Windows machine, we have used one tool called remote desktop connection. Same way to connect our Linux machine, I need some tool. And that tools are called as terminals. In market, we have a lot of software, those are called as terminals we can use, but which one I'm going to use the very commonly used in market. I'm going to download Putty. So I have given the website here. From this website, we can download Putty and Putty. I need to download these two tools. What is the use of these two tools? You will learn practically. Scroll down. Here I'm getting putty dot exe. As per your system configuration, click on putty dot exe here, and system is going to download putty dot exe. Same way, scroll down. Here we are getting 
putty gen dot ex download click on this putty dot exe so we have downloaded both the in the market guys we have hundreds of companies are providing terminal i am using the one which is very commonly used in market if you know any other tool if you want to use you can use that also i am showing you the one which is very commonly used in market and i want to familiar with this tool because it might have been working if you, when you go to in real time you are familiar with this tool otherwise it's up to your wish if you want to use any other So I've downloaded both the tools. I'm going to keep both the tools in my Hatch 127. So we have downloaded both the tools. Now the next step. Next step is I need to connect to my machine. I need to connect to my machine. How can I connect? I can connect to my machine with the help of Putty. But Putty does not support M5. Putty does not support M5. Which file it support? It support a file called PPK file. So it means I need to convert this PEM file into PPK. How can I convert this PEM file into PPK? With the tool called Putty. Generate PPK file using Putty. And I'm requesting you to please see this very carefully. If you're doing any mistake while connecting to your machine, you will get an error message. So please see this very carefully, the process which I'm going to follow now. Double click on Putty, tool get open. Normally in Windows machine, if you want to use any tool, you need to install that tool. But Putty and Putty Gen, we don't need to install. Without installation also we can use and there is no option to install those. So directly double click on that tool, the tool get. Now, click on load. Now when I click on load, go to your batch 127. We need to select our PEM file, but we are not able to see our PEM file. Why? It is searching for a file with extension dot ppk. It means I need to change this extension from ppk to all files. And now I'm able to see my. So what you need to do, click on load and select your pen file. Okay. Done. Next, click on safe private you need to click on only two buttons load and safe private key you don't need to click anywhere click on yes i'm giving the name i'm giving same name as my file but extension is going to be dot concept you can see here, here I'm getting a PPK. Do you want me to show these steps again? I can show you again. If you want me to show again, please confirm in the chat box. If anyone want. Because if you are doing any mistake in this while connecting 110%, you will get an error. Okay, I'll show again. I'm deleting this PP. Double click on Putigen. Click on load. 
you can note down also if you want to note down anywhere you can note down these steps also load you need to select your pem file here i'm selecting my pem file click on done click on save drive click on yes now give the name to your i'm giving same name as my pem file you can give any other name you can give that also it doesn't make any difference if you give same name or any other you can say i'm again saying you need to only click on two buttons load and save private key don't click on anywhere if you don't click on anywhere like generate or save public key you are getting a wrong pem file sorry wrong ppk file which cloud platforms does not support you need to click only on two now now i need to connect to my to connect to this particular machine i need to note down the public ip of our linux virtual how can i note down go to source here i am able to see the public ip of our linux virtual machine i am noting down this part now open Double click on put it. It is asking for host name or IP address. So here we need to enter our IP. Next step. After entering of our IP address, the next step is we need to attach PPK file with put. how can i attach a ppk file with putty click on this plus button for ssh plus button for ssh next click on this plus button for auth next you are able to see here one option called credentials click on credentials now the first option which you are able to see here private file key for authentication you need to select your ppk file seven open except enter our username press enter and you can see here i am able to connect to my linux virtual i am again going to show you how to connect double click on putty enter the public ip of your machine you need to attach ppk so click on plus button for ssh next click on plus button for auth and then click on credentials the first option which you are getting it there we need to select our now enter our username Let's enter. We are able to connect to our. In previous session, we have discussed it. If we are selecting a size called B one S, we are getting it additional four GB of space. Are we getting that four G of space in Linux also? Yes. 
because that is depend on the size which we have set up. And I can see that particular size, that disk, yeah, by using a command called df h. Here we are. The 4GB one we are able to see here. And for Windows, they are providing us 127 GB at this. For Linux, how much they are providing? How can I check? Click on size. Sorry, not click on disk, not size. Click on disk. GB by default, they are providing us for. So this is the minimum size they are providing us. If you want more, we can add more size also, but that we'll discuss in upcoming session. So this is how we can create our Linux virtual machine with the help of SSH. Any question anyone have, please raise your Yes, Kiran Kumar. So if, if suppose if we, unfortunately, if you miss the PEM file, so uh, how can we download the PEM file once again? Without downloading PEM file system will not create your machine. No, no, we, uh, we already downloaded, but the, unfortunately I missed that. Lost. Yes, huh? I lost I will that. learn it, regarding that we'll learn in upcoming session. Ah, sure. Thanks. Okay. okay. Yes, Prasad. Prasad K, you can unmute yourself. Hello, are you able to hear my voice? Yes, Prasad. Uh, regarding while creating virtual mission, it is showing mm. one option, right? Architecture, it is showing x64 and something, it is showing AMS. How do you know that? That is purely depend on the performance. The option which you are getting it, I have already mentioned regarding here. x64 and ERM64. Because of this one, your performance is going to better if you are going to select ERM6. Okay, uh, but price is going to be higher for you. That customer okay. will confirm to select the correct option or we only decide it? No, the client will decide. Okay. Okay, client will decide which option you need to select. X64 or ERM64. In ERM64, you are getting it better performance, but price will be higher. Okay. In X64, you are getting it less performance, but the price which you are using, the price will be low for you. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yes, Nilesh. Uh, hi, Ankit. Uh, very good evening. Good evening. Uh, this public IPs uh, you have selected, mm -hmm. uh, Will that be by default we have to take or uh, is there any edit option to change that one? And uh, you want this, uh, to change the public IP. Yeah, yeah. It is also Will possible. it be possible? It is possible. You can disassociate the public IP and associate the another IP with that machine. Okay. It is also possible. Okay. You need to disassociate this public IP with that machine. If you click on public IP, mm -hmm. uh, click on overview. Here you are getting it disassociated. Okay. Okay. You can disassociate this public IP. And okay. whatever the IP addresses we are getting in Azure public IP, these public IPs are called as elastic public IP. Elastic public IP. Yes, it is elastic public IP. By default, we are getting it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anyone knows the meaning of elastic IP? Whatever you know, guys, you can please let me know. I'll explain what is elastic IP. Correct. Elastic IP is also called as static IP also. Okay. I'll explain. We have two types of IP addresses in market. One is called elastic IP, or you can call it as static IP. Elastic IP and static IPs, both are same thing. And we have a one more high type of IP address that is called as dynamic IP. 
So what is dynamic IP and what is elastic IP? Let's take example. I am getting dynamic IP. If I'm getting dynamic IP, if I stop my machine and start my machine, system will change the IP address of our machine. If we are getting dynamic, but if we are getting elastic IP or static IP, if you stop your machine, start your machine after hundred years or hundred times, your IP address will not get changed at any cost. Dynamic IP, if you stop your start your machine 100 times or even after 100 years, every time system will change the IP address if we are getting dynamic IP. But if you are getting elastic IP, your IP address will not get changed. And by default in Azure, we are getting it dynamic public might be in the interview, they can ask you which type of public IP we are getting it. That is elastic public IP address. So this is what we have about how we can create our Linux virtual machine with the help of SSH. Any question anyone have, let me know. So we'll move forward with the next option where I'm going to show you how can I create a Linux machine with password option? Yes, Ripple, you can let. Uh, yes, yes hi, Ankit. Hi, Ripple. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's say we have created, uh, let's say we have created the Linux machine. Uh, mm -hmm. with the default configuration which you have created uh, right now but let's say later on we decided uh, we uh, we thought that we need to increase the configuration so do we have an option to increase the configuration with the yes, existing it's one possible it's possible you can increase the hard disk size or you need to increase cpu and ram you can do that that will learn in upcoming session when we'll come to a topic called scale up and scale down okay yeah. so we and have we'll the specific uh, number 16. okay that okay. time will do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Even we can increase the hard disk size also. If you want to increase it, you want to increase CPU RAM, it is also possible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine then. Fine. Fine. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, Karthik. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Ankit. Okay. Uh, good evening. I, the question I have is like uh, each time now, say for example, you created only one virtual machine as of now, correct? Mm, correct. And you generated the PEM file for that specific virtual machine. Correct. So each, now say I have increased the number of virtual machines or the number of sessions. Okay. So in that case, there would be different PEM files would be generated. Right? You can use existing also. In that list of value, you will get it. Because I'll, I'll just I'll show you that also. See here. I'll go to my resource group. Here is our key. I can use the same key for other machine also, but that key needs to be there in our Azure. I can use this also while creating a machine. So is the uh, so it is tagged to the resource group which you are creating? Yes. Okay, so if Reason I have while when you're creating it, I let me show you that. Okay. See here. Here is we are getting generate a new key pair. Use yes. existing public stored in Azure. I can select this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that it means uh, if I have uh, two VMs, I can use the same uh, PEM file. Correct. You can use it. And even you can use for 10 machine, 15 machine, 20 machines also. You can. Okay. It's not and meant to just for only two. You can okay. use it. And second thing you said, it's a static, uh, it's an elastic IP or the static IP you said, right? Elastic IP and static IP both are same. Yes. Some uh, people are calling static IP, some people are calling elastic IP. So both are same. Okay. So in uh, just now you said <laughs> about uh, dissociating the IP, correct? Uh, mm -hmm. Whatever IP is there, you can change it to whatever we want. So is the IP or something associated with the VM? Like uh, because if you happen to change it, the no, key pair you... or something gets changed because of that? No, no, key pair and those things are not going to change. If you want to disassociate the IP address, it means this IP address is going to remove from your virtual machine. 
Okay. Like if I click on this associate, this IP address is going to remove from this particular virtual machine. And now the machine which I have, it is without public IP address. Okay. Okay. If you okay. want to again associate this IP address to this machine, you can associate also. I just a minute. I just a minute. Uh, I let me open YouTube. I already have a video regarding this particular thing in our YouTube channel. Just one minute. I'll share that YouTube video with all of you. Switch list playlist. I need to go to Azure playlist. Just a minute. Where is it? How to disassociate and associate public IP? Yes. I'm sharing this video. You can check this out. So this is a complete video regarding how we can disassociate, or if you want to again associate a public IP to our machine, we can do. Now you can see here, associate option is enabled. Yes. Earlier, disassociate option was. Mm -hmm. Okay. And okay. if I click on my machine, see, a machine is having no public IP. Right. Okay. I can go to that public IP and I can. I can associate that one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Vaski, you can unmute. Yeah. So normally, what is the reason to associate and deassociate, sir? Why it is required? Because for every mission, there is some IP address, na? Right? Like unique ID. Vaski, we have that option. The option which I have told you, it depends on client requirement. If they want to change the public IP of that machine, we can disassociate and we can assign another public. For few things, we don't have any logics. For few options, we have just a feature. We need to understand that feature. Based on our requirement, we need to apply that feature. But whenever you deassociate, it will be the same IP address, huh? because we assume by default. You can create another IP address also. Go to public IP address, create another IP address, and assign that public IP address. How to create sir, that one public IP address? Go I to mean, public IP. Sorry? How to create a new IP address? Go to public IP address. Here we have an option of click on create. And then we can associate to that virtual machine, right? Create that one in same resource group and assign that one to your machine. Mission. Okay. okay. And you can and see here, yeah. it is creating the static IP, not a dynamic IP. Okay, standard. Yes. And uh, what is the definition of this one, sir? PEM and PPK? Say private. Full form. form. I uh, don't remember the full public form. Public enhanced mode, something. Uh, M is full form with this one. Private enhanced mode. By mail. I'm sharing it. Why this one? Basically, it's a key file, no? Both PPK and PEM. These are the key files we have. It With the help of this one, we can connect to our machines. Shared. Full form of PPK and time file I have shared in the chat. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yes, Rakesh. Yeah, yeah. I just had a query about that static IP. Uh -huh. We're using a public IP, right? Which are coming from the Azure, not from the private, right? Which we are creating as an. Uh, VLANs or the network uh, groups, right? IP address is the public IP address. Whichever we are getting, we are getting it from Azure. We are getting it. We can't use our own IP address. We can only use those IP addresses which are reserved by the Azure. Okay, if but from but Kota, right, we are getting the IP address. Yeah, true. So when you said that it's a static IP, why mm. do we are creating that the public IP address or the public network group? Those are we need a public IP. IP. By default, it is giving static IP. Okay. So said by default, it is giving. Some of the cases like we can hold up public and private both, right? One is that the external communication, what is for the internal communication, right? By default, you can't create a machine without private IP. 
no i can create a you can create a machine without public ip but it is impossible to create a machine without private okay that's what my concern is that we can hold both right public and private correct yes if you want to connect a machine publicly you need public ip if you want to connect a machine internally one machine to another machine we are using private ip okay okay yes go okay. thank you hey actually basically in that elastic uh, there is a we are bringing the one static ip address right that is a chargeable ip associated with that it is, it is in azure it is free 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 only yeah oh, yes in azure it is free it is not chargeable in this okay how to calculate that what are the machine for example aws is having the that is a price calculator in uh, here, here also, also we have a calculator calculator is there in, in cloud in azure also we have okay other uh, there is a okay where we need to calculate if we are can you give the idea right sorry how, uh, that how to calculate that um, we'll we'll uh, i'll show you in upcoming session okay fine and how to use that I, calculator okay. we'll learn okay and yeah, another thing in my login uh, there, there is no document only videos are there so i can't see any documents in my login i already paid it you see here documents are already uploaded 127 batch mm. see pdfs whichever i have used till now mm. all pdfs are up till yesterday sorry till yesterday till yesterday i have used five pdfs all five pdfs we cannot download it only we can view uh, this view one. for this lifetime one. access okay we cannot download it no download okay but what is also not showing the okay. okay i will check it out please check again you will get the option okay yes prasad uh, regarding the public and private ip which ip you have to share this uh, to the customer or client public, public. Or private public only. public private is used for internal purposes okay Uh, is it possible to connect this port key using the host name? No. You need to connect by using public ID. Okay. 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 Now I'm going to show you how we can create a Linux machine by using password also. So click on create. i'm using a same resource group i'm giving the virtual machine name vm127 password scroll down region image size and here i need password now here i can give my username I'll give again same username as Azure user. Password I'm giving here. Done. And system is by default enabling our port number. So the only option which I'm changing here from last example of Linux one. Earlier we are using SSH public key. and this time we are using password other than that everything is same now i am directly click on review plus sometimes when you do practice it happen don't worry if you getting this type of error you can go back and again come back to review plus create they revalidate your records this thing happen if you directly click on review plus sometimes this thing happen now i'm going to click on
still in process. Go to resource. And here I'm getting the Now I need to connect to this particular Linux. How can I connect? I'm again going to open putty. Entering the public IP. Do I need to select again that key here? No, because I don't need to select because I'm not using key. This time I'm using password option. Click on open, click on exit. Entering my username. Now it is asking for password. I'm able to connect to my machine. Can check here df hyphen x. Here I'm getting that 4 GB, and here we are getting that 30 GB. We are getting it. 29 GB because they are allocating 29 GB, 1 GB, they are not allocating. So this is how we can create our Linux machine by using password option. Any question anyone have regarding this password option also, you can please raise your hand. Yes, Vaski. Uh, just uh, not understanding, sir. What is this password option? I think the previous one and this one is a different, sir. Maybe I'm, in that uh, one, we are using PPK file, and in this one, we are using a password. Okay, that's only different. So there, PPK file you attach, no sir, and the previous one. Yes. No. Okay. Like a normal password, like you want to log into your Gmail, but you are using your password. Password. Okay. Here to connect to this particular machine, we are using password. Password. Okay. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Any any doubt? Any question you have, Vasky? Uh, that particular screen you can show me, sir. Where is the exactly the password you are giving? The putty putty here. Putty. In this terminal, I have given scroll up. Here I have entered the password. Okay. I mistake, I have given the wrong password. Again, it is asking for password. So here I have entered the password. You can't Previously, see my password. You are not given password here, sir. In the previous I mistake, I have given wrong password. Uh, not That's here. why it is given an excess. password uh, when you try the PPK. At the time, you have not given the password. It is not going to. It is not going to ask password because at okay. that time I'm using a PPK and that okay. PPK is a password. Got it, sir. Got it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so for that uh, PPK and um, PEM file, right? So why that, I mean, uh, Azure and AWS are giving PPK and then we have to convert, uh, I mean, first PEM, then we have to convert PPK. And directly, why PPK can't it? It does me? not support PEM file. Sorry? It does not support PEM files. Okay. In market, we have one terminal called Git. Mm -hmm. Git that supports PEM file. Okay, so for general... It Git... does not support PEM file, so we need to convert <laughs> PEM to PPK. If you want to use Git Bash, you can use Git Bash also. That supports PEM file. Okay, so by default, uh, the Azure was taken that uh, for, I mean for using of Git, not for the putty. Even AWS is also using a PEM yeah, file sure. by default. So majority of users are using Git, Git Bash. Putty, you are, we are using in market very frequently than. Git bash is number on number two. Number one terminal is putty. Number two is git bash. Then, then it's, it is, it should have give a direct PPK file, right? I mean, because putty Banker, is number uh, one. Putty is not giving that option. You can do one thing. I'll try to find the email ID of putty. You can email them. 
you can give a suggestion to them because they are not giving that option to us not putty i mean that uh, azure or aws can uh, you know customize to putty because putty is the number one so aws is it's giving right? that option you can direct generate a ppk from aws but putty uh, azure is not giving that option okay that's what okay so azure is there is no option okay no aws is giving it and even in aws also we are not generating it because mm -hmm. in some cases we need pem file also okay okay so but if it is so those are my those are my AWS students. They know in which yeah. cases we require PEM file. Okay, okay. If there is an option in customization for generating while generating PPK or PEM, that should be good to choose. Okay. But anyway, we, we, we are, we are, if they are giving it, still we will not use that option. I'm okay. saying AWS is giving it, but mm -hmm. still we are not using that option. Okay. Because in some cases we need PEM file. Okay. That cases okay. I need to learn. Yeah. You need to learn those things, in which cases you need a PEM file. Okay, fine, thank you. Yes, Prasad. Uh, regarding while restarting the operation, operating system, you said the public IP will be changed in every restart, right? No, if we are getting dynamic IP. Okay. By uh, default, Azure is giving us static IP. Okay, where we have to check the static or dynamic here? By default, I give it as giving it. If you go to your IP addresses, where I'm creating it, that time I'm getting the option. But by default, they are giving that they are giving us the static IP. There is no option we can check here. Okay, here it is mentioned. Static okay. it is mentioned. So by default, they are giving static IP. This IP will never change, right? No. Okay. Yes, Manika. Uh, I just want to know, uh, is it possible to enable the two-factor authentication? MFA for your yes. Azure account? Yes. Hmm? For this VM, whatever no. you log in. Not for VM, for virtual mesh, for our Azure account we can. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yes, Vikram. Yeah, actually, uh, you said that static IP can, can't be changed, right? You said? If we restart our machine, yeah, yeah. Stop, uh, start our IP address will not get changed. But the, you, but also you said like uh, we can change it manually, right? Manual we can change We can it, right? disassociate. Yeah, that means that means we are changing. No? Like uh, disassociate and we that can- That is we are doing it disassociate. I was talking about if you stop your machine, start your machine, at that time, IP address will not get changed. But if in that case, what you are doing, you're removing the IP address. You're not stopping your machine. You're removing the IP address. Removing and we are assigning new IP. Correct. That is different thing. Yeah. But, but I was talking about if you, that will change because if you're removing the IP address. But I was talking, if you stop your machine, start your machine, in that particular okay. IP address will not get changed and that is static IP. So there's a difference between removing and stop. Yeah, but while removing, but there is a chance to assign new IP. That is by our own. We can do that it. Is, right? That's what I'm saying. That is different. Yeah, but that is a chance, right? There is a chance to assign, right? Ah, yes. Okay. But you can't consider that as an option as a static IP change. No, no, that is okay. Yeah. Yes, we will. Will you can unmute yourself? Yes, Madhav. Uh, actually, sir, uh, if I created two virtual machines, mm -hmm. uh, and can I uh, use one public IP to? Uh, not possible. Not possible. Every machine needs to have a different, different public. IP. Okay. Okay. It is not okay. possible. Okay. Yes, Vilo, you can unmute now. Vilo Mani, do you have any question? Yes, Prasad. Uh, while well, I'm to the putty, it is showing Azure's, uh, it is showing Azure with some name, right? VM 127 that associate. Is it possible to change from Azure to some other name here? This is the name of my virtual machine. Which is your user? 
Yes, so that is. This okay. is the username which I have given while creating my machine. You can give your name as a username. So. Okay. 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 You can give any name. Your name, my name, X, Y, Z, whichever the name you want to give, you can give. Okay. Thank okay. you. Anyone have any question? You can please let me know. Yes, Venkat. Hey, good, good evening. How are you doing today? Good evening, Venkat. How are you? I'm I okay, really thanks, forget sir. that one which you told me. I'll do by tomorrow morning. Yeah, sure. Busy. Yeah, no worries. About I, I remember, yeah. still remember it. You told uh -huh. me that particular part. I, uh -huh. I was busy. I'll do by tomorrow morning. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I have a couple of questions for ah, you. Yes, yes, you can ask. Here. Okay. So, if I would like to create uh, two machine, two virtual machines at a time, or three, or ten, uh, so how can and where can I do in Azure? So can Instead of one. Question. You want to create multiple machines? Yeah, at a time. At a time, that can only possible by using ERM templates or by using auto scale. Like oh, here we don't have any option. Okay. We don't have that option. Like I can give that numbers here. That can possible by using auto scaling here or ERM templates. In ERM templates, you need to write a custom JSON code for. Oh, oh, oh. so there is no direct option here. No. While we are initially create one virtual machine with the help of Ubuntu or a hat like that. No, okay. No, 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 no. We don't have that option. Okay. So another question, Ankit, uh, right? So regardless, a lot of students, they ask the same question. So about uh, this uh, static uh, or uh, elastic IP, right? So yeah. my question is here regarding, so even if you are reboot the host or shut down or uh, uh, start the host, right? Anyway, right? The static IP should be the remains uh, same. Uh, same, right? So it uh, mm -hmm. should not be changed at all. No, no, it is not going to be changed. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's all at my end. Uh, Any more thanks, questions? Sir. Yeah. No, thanks for your time. I really appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Yes, Cedric. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, I, I, I don't know if it's possible to, to repeat the, the steps for, uh, I mean, for using the, the password because it was too fast for me. Okay. Let uh, me show you. Uh, are you able to understand the first option where we uh, have yes. created our machine with the help of SSH? Yes, yes. Oh. I'm holding down here. In previous example, what we have done, we have select SSH publicly. Okay. In this yes. one, you just need to select password option. Give your username and you can give your password. Like I'll give a username as Ankit user. I'm entering a password. Done. And then directly click on review plus. Because we are not going to work any of these tab, right? So directly click on review plus create. Is validate your records. We do again. And now I'm going to click on. This system is going to create your machine, and you can connect to this particular machine with the help of public. Clear, Cedric? Yes, sir. I mean, my question is that. You don't have to convert that, uh, like uh, for the uh, for your voice the... is low, Cedric. Can you please repeat your question? Yes, I was saying that you don't have to con like you don't have to convert that uh, that file. Like you, for here, the, the... the system is yeah. not downloading any file. It's like a normal password. Like in previous session, what we have done, we have created our Windows machine. Our Windows machine is asking for username and password. Same way here also. Just you need to enter your public IP. Here is my public IP. Click on open. Enter your username. And enter your pass. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, what's now? We are able to connect to our machine. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. 
Yes, Subramaniam, you can unmute. What's in that? Because it's, it's, it seems like. Hi. Yes, Subramaniam. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Ah, okay. Uh, is there any limitation uh, about the using of uh, public IP in the free account? For free account, you have a limitation of max public, five public IP. For free tier account. Okay, okay, okay. Not for pay as you go one. For free tier account, with first 30 days, you have a limitation of five. Five max, right? Okay. Yes. Maximum okay. five public IPs you can have. Or okay. might be if after five, sometimes they increase your limitation to 10 also. But mm -hmm. maximum is five, but I have seen in some cases they have increased the quota of 10 also for some students. But mm -hmm. there is no documented from their side that they increase to 10. But maximum is five. So it means after practice, you can delete that. Okay. So once we use the public IP, <clears throat> and do we, so sometimes if I want to reserve the public IP for a long time, is it possible in the Azure account? Yes, you can do that also. But after, I'm, I'm suggesting always, after a practice, delete those messages. No, no, I'm not talking about the free account. So once we in the paid account. Ah, yes, you uh, can. Reserve for you a long time. You can reserve. Time. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So actually, you said like uh, the PPK file can be uh, used for uh, multiple VMs, correct? It's one so, PPK file, PEM file, yes, yeah. you can use it. So that means like, uh, is, is, is it not a security breach? Like because uh, the password like, so it's a security uh, isolation, I mean, it's a security isolation, right? Like uh, no, there will it, be some yes, issue. If we no, the person was for... asking it is possible or not. I said it is possible. If, you, if you, you don't want to use it, definitely we are not going to use it for multiple machine, but it is possible. Okay. Okay. That we are not using it, but it is possible. Okay. Yes, Karthik. Uh, Ankit, just one more thing. Like, uh, is in Azure, is there any restriction on the uh, OS uh, OS that can be used? Like, say, for example, only Ubuntu can be used for Azure, or is there any other no. OS which you can use? Only Azure is supporting some operating systems. Uh, like if you might have, be remember, we have to see Linux as well. Then yes, we have I, uh, just, a just a minute. Here are the list of operating system which Azure is supporting. Oh, okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so do and one more thing. Do they do they do the charges vary for the OS which we use, or is it constant? It depend on the size. Uh, the size of memory disk, and what you use. Size, yes. Hard disk, CPU, RAM on three things they are going to charge us. Oh, okay. Not on the OS. No. Okay. okay. But yes, Windows 1 and Linux 1 vary because in Windows 1 we need more hard disk. In Linux 1 we get less. So in Windows to Windows it is going to be very. Okay. But okay. because of your hard disk. Mm -hmm. Understood. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, we do. You can unmute. Okay, the regarding this uh, private IP address, we can disassociate and do that. Uh, same like public. Private IP is not possible. Private IP is not possible. You can disassociate. Only public IP you can disassociate. That's not possible. Okay. No, not and possible. this one, uh, this password, no, you are setting, no, that we can, if we forget, we can reset. We can the reset also. Uh, yes. The EC machine, same ES, EC machine. Yes, we can do that also. Hello, my okay. okay. Yes, feel it as possible. Okay, okay, okay. My internet is bad. Thank you. Yes, Murlu Krishna. Uh, hi, Ankit. Uh, okay, I have a question. Like, we are connecting uh, the uh, Linux Linux machine with Putty, right? Is there uh, any other options are available like Git Bash and all? Yes, there are. As I said, in market, we have hundreds of tools. We have turn with if you just search on Google's Linux terminals. You will get lot of. You will find here Linux terminals which we have it in market. Uh, okay, yeah. My question yeah, is: there is all the, we, there are lot of. Can we connect with the Git Bash? Yes, you can get, connect with Git Bash also. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I will search in the internet. Thank you. Yes, it is possible. You can connect with Gupta Dash box. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, please start. Uh, in putty it is showing host name or ip address right as of now we are mm -hmm. using we are logging to the system using ip address correct uh, how do you log in with host name here we don't have any host name for one here this is not a host name if you want this this will be your host name. we can consider this as a host is it possible to log in with using that host name yes channel it ssh With this option, it can be possible. You can. Can you show me that? Will not possible for now because I need to end the session and I need to go with the questions. I can show you in the tomorrow session. Okay. Okay. Remind me tomorrow. I'll show you in tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Is it possible to change the source name here? A your user? Yes. Not this possible. One. This is okay. your username. It's not possible to change. Okay. This you need to define when you are creating a machine. Can you show me that one more time where it is showing this host name? It's user name. Yes. Host name. You go to overview, connect, SSH. Okay. There you are. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yes, go. Uh, will you give the training on uh, PowerShell actually industry? Currently, Azure mostly they are using that uh, PowerShell tool only for compatible for Azure. You, know, you can please thing? contact Training Institute regarding those things. Why this is no? What I'm asking that instead of using this uh, a putty and all, we can use the PowerShell. Right? That is my. Question. You want to connect to your machine by using PowerShell? Yeah. You can, with the help of PowerShell, you can create machines. Okay. Okay. If you want to create your machines, you need to create your resources with the help of PowerShell. You can do that, but you cannot connect a machine with the help of PowerShell. Uh, okay. Okay. You can okay. create resources. Okay. So whatever things in front time we are doing is that it can be done by PowerShell. PowerShell also. Yes. So we'll, we'll discuss few things in our upcoming. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Yes, Subraman, you can ask. It's, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Kiran Kumar. Uh, yes, uh, Ankit. Actually, I want to, uh, when I'm creating the uh, VM, that time generally we we'll use CPU, RAM, and hard disk, right? Mm -hmm. So if I want to increase the RAM for uh, 1, G, 1, uh, 1 GB to 5 GB, then uh, is it possible to create that uh, separately uh, without increasing the CPU and uh, hard disk? It is not possible. You need to change the size. And how to change the size, we'll discuss when we'll come to it. Only we can change the size if you want to increase CPU and RAM. And see, only, only CPU is not possible. You can only increase CPU. When you want to increase CPU, RAM will also increase. Because okay, here so we are going to change the instance type. Okay, but both will increase at a time. If, if, if we want to change the RAM. And, and we'll, we'll practically discuss about the topic when we'll come to PPT number 16. Okay. Okay, Thank practically you. I'll show you. Anyone have any question, you can please let me know or we can end our session here. In tomorrow's session, we are going to discuss about Linux commands. Any question anyone have, you can please raise your hand. Yes, Radha Shekhar. Yeah, uh, in a project, uh, we have both uh, Linux and uh, uh, Microsoft Windows operating system. Is there any connectivity to use? Any option here? No, I didn't understand your question, what you're trying to say. Now, in, if in a project, if we, if we are using both the Linux and uh, Windows, both operating systems, mm. uh, if any connectivity uh, means we can use both at a time means uh, now how the data will flow means how 
in real time, majorly we are 99.9 percent .9 you're using Linux based operating system. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So, what is your question here? I'm not understand your question. You want to connect to both machine at yeah. a time. Yeah. Windows machine you can connect with remote desktop connection and Linux machine you can connect with put the terminal or get bash terminal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, no, one more thing. Any cluster mm -hmm. concept is there? Uh, in, uh, in Linux? No, we are not going to discuss any of these things. Okay, thank you. Okay, look like no one has any more question. So with this, I am ending this session. In tomorrow's session, we'll discuss about the Linux commands. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow. Thank you.